Hello, welcome to lesson 54, Generics in C-Sharp, brought to you by Angro Technologies. My name is Harish. In this session, we are going to learn what is Generics and what is the advantage of using Generics. Okay, Generics were introduced in the C-Sharp version 2.0 and the advantage of using Generics is it makes our class and methods uh, independent of the type. Okay, that is a major advantage of using the Generics. And generics class are extensively used by the collection classes available in system.collections.generic namespace. Okay, it means that in last sessions we learned the collection classes. Some of the collection collection classes are like stack, queue, hash table, sorted list, array list, and these collections are extensively uh, extensively make use of generics classes. Okay, right now to understand generics, what we'll do is we'll jump into Visual Studio and we'll start coding. Okay, I'm having a console application here. What I'm going to do here is um, I would like to add a class first, okay, public class, and the class name is simple calculator. Okay, what is this class going to do? This class is going to have a method called public static, and it's going to give the boolean values like true or false, and the method name is is equal. Okay, is equal and it's going to take two integer parameters like value one, comma, int value two. Okay, and what is this method going to do? Its method is going to compare two input par two parameters like value one and value two, and it's going to tell whether two values are equal or not. So I'll use the comparator operator to do that work. Okay, and this works fine, but oh, I have to use the return key. Okay, and this method, the logic, and in this class, we have a method called is equal, and the logic is written here like it will compare the two inputs and just gives the Boolean value whether they are equal or not. It means the true or false. Okay, how do I implement this in my main method? It's very simple. Since this method is returning me the Boolean value, I have to uh, take a variable to hold, hold that result. So, the variable name is equal. Okay, and this, since this is a static class, I have to call with the class name itself. So I'll call, call with the simple calculator class name dot is equal, and it's taking two integer parameters. I'll like to pass ten comma ten. Okay, now since the values one and value two, ten and ten are equal, it should provide us the output like true. So what I'll do is I'll use if loops if else loop to print the condition equal if equal print like telling that okay equal. If not, if the numbers are not equal, then print. Okay, uh, I'll just use another loop. I'll just paste there. Print telling that not equal. Okay, and my code is ready. What is this code having? What is this piece of program having? This piece of program is having a calculator class. In the calculator class, we have a method called is equal. It is taking two parameters, value one and value two, and comparing those parameters and giving us the result whether the val whether the input given is true or false, like equal or not. Okay, and we are implementing that in the main method, and we are comparing if it is equal, print a statement called equal on the console window. If it is not equal, print like not equal on the console screen. Okay, since we are passing ten and ten as the parameters here, obviously it has to build and compile telling that s it is equal. To cross verify, let us check by passing some other number which is not equal to 10, like 5. When I do that, obviously it works fine and it is telling not equal. Okay. But what if user what wants to compare the string? Okay. If user wants to compare the string, what he has to do? Like he has to compare this string telling that this apple is equal to this apple or not. But but I can't do this. Why? Because my equal method is taking only the integer parameters, but I'm trying to pass here a string. In order, if, if I want my, this method to compare the string values, then I have to come here and change um, the type of this value 1 and value 2 to string. But uh, if I want to compare the string, in the sense if you want to compare the string as well as like if I want to compare the float values and the decimal values, every time I have to come and change the parameter type here. Okay, otherwise I have to write the other methods which will take these things like string as the input parameter. But here what we are making, we are making the code, we should make our code reusable instead of ma making separate methods for each of the type. So at that point of time, 
uh, we have one option to make this method as reusable what is that method instead of passing your the integer type uh, we have another data type called object okay we have another type called object where is this object defined from this object is from coming from system dot object class okay okay uh, keep in mind every type in the dotnet framework is directly or indirectly inherited from system dot object so now when i run this program obviously it works fine telling that it's equal okay but keep in mind what is the disadvantage of using this type like object and ob object data type here it's very simple suppose what i'll do here is uh, instead of passing the string type i'll i would like to pass integer type okay since this is a integer type i'm passing here it is integer is a struct type but object is a class type but when i run this program what it's going to do here is it's going to um, bring the it is going to play the role of boxing and unboxing okay what is boxing conversion of uh, value type struct into uh, reference type that is class object so see unnecessary boxing is happening here so this is a major disadvantage here and also this method is not strongly typed in the sense for example you can observe here here i can compare string with the integer for example i would like to pass your like apple you can observe here this is not fine this is the wrong way of coding if i do if i type like 10 comma 10 also my, the intelligence the red squiggly is not happening here or coming here why because since we are using a object type um, it's not allowing it's not showing us right squiggly here because every data type in the dotnet framework is directly or indirectly inherited from system dot object so here what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to compare the integer value with the string value but this is not good way of coding now when i run this program or when i build this program obviously it will build telling that no errors you, you can see here the build got succeeded but but you can tell that this method is not strongly typed so your the major two are disadvantages of using object typers one is uh, it will make unnecessary use of boxing and other one is your method will be not strongly typed at this point of time if you want to make your method independent of the type then you can use generics okay what is generics we'll see here now instead of uh, using the object type let's make use of generics how to implement generics to your method or class as of now we'll see how to implement a generics to your method it's very simple after your method name just open the angular brace and uh, pass or uh, type a word like here I'll, i would like to take t of the type t is a type okay and end with the angular brace another one instead of object we are going to pass the type as t okay what is this t we don't know as of now okay now what did i do i just made use of generics this is the way how do we define the generics okay and and once we are using generic this is not this is not the correct way of returning the value so how do i do that it's very simple uh, like um, we have like value one dot we have a method called equal okay this method equal and is taking parameter the second one which we want to compare so it will take the value type two okay now what did i do i just implemented the generics how do i implement generics after your method name just open the angular brace and pass a uh, character like i've taken the t here of it's of t type okay and my values are also of t type and here i'm returning the value comparing the two values and returning the result okay coming to my main method since i've implemented the generics here okay i have to i'll just replace your 10 since i've implemented generics here i want to do some alteration here why because okay i'll do it from first like simple dot calculator we have is equal you can observe here the signature of this is equal method is changed you can observe here two angular braces telling that this equal method is of generic type so when i do that what it is going to do it is going to tell that okay i'm i'm giving you the type option whichever the type you want you can take here as of now i want to compare the numbers so i'll take the type as integer and i'll pass the two parameters like 10 comma 10 okay now now you can observe your method is type safe in the sense it's its method is independent of the type and this piece of code is independent of the type you your your you need not of your you need need not of specifying the type whatever the user want to pass instead of that you are allowing the user to specify the type where he is calling that method that's what we did here we just call this e is equal and we are 
specifying the type what we want like integer suppose if you want to compare the string uh, how do I do that it's very simple is equal is equal okay and if you want to compare the string it's very simple instead of integer we will pass string here and we'll compare the string values it's very easy like apple and it's taking another value This, this is what the usage of generics okay unnecessary usage of boxing is avoided and your method whatever the method you're using here is independent of the type okay this is the major advantage of the generics now when I run this program obviously it will run successfully and tells yes it is equal this is what uh, we made our method like independent of the type and that's what we saw in the presentation telling that generics class allows to design classes and methods decoupled from the data types in the sense here in my main method in the class calculator we are we are having a method called is equal but it is independent of the type whenever the user calls this method he is going to specify what type you want whether integer type or a string type based on the type he passed is going to pass parameters and you'll get the result this is what the generics is and this is the one of the important feature in the C sharp and collections will make uh, collection uh, will make major use of this generics okay now uh, instead of making your method as generics what if I make a class as generic as obviously it is possible it's very easy just cut this part like this and paste it here that's all now your class is generic now uh, since we are uh, passing making the class as generic I want to specify this angular braces to the class itself not to the method so I'll come and I'll paste it here now this works fine and when I run this program obviously it is building and telling that yes the method the parameters what you're passing is equal this is how you'll make your method as well as class generic and that's what we learned in this session how to make a class or a method generic okay you can observe here one way of making is equal method reusable is to use object type parameters and we used it but the problem was is equal method is not type safe it, it was taking the parameters like integer and string as well but that is not the correct way of coding that was the problem with object type and the performance in per performance degradation due to boxing and un unboxing happening there and this was the problem with the object type later we solved with solved it using the generic type okay using the generics class and this is how we'll define the generics class like public stack bool is equal angular braces open and close within the type t specified it's not that you have to use type the alphabet t only you can use the uh, whatever you want like you can use Q L M whatever you want I have used like since it is like uh, we're using the type word so I've taken this alphabet as T itself you want if you want you can use the alphabet whatever you want and at the point when clients want to invoke this method they need to specify the type they want the method to operate on instead of in the main code we are specifying the type we are asking the user to specify the type what he wants where he calls that method that is the major advantage of using generics and um, in this example we made method generic and along the same lines we also saw how to make classes generic in not only the classes we can also make the interfaces and delegates also generic okay that's what we learned about generics in this class in this session sorry and thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to Anglo training below